Let's turn to burn. 207, Mike. Yes, to each their own, Alfred. All right, let's go into wide receivers. I'm not taking Will Levis. I already explained that earlier, but I am going to take Cedric Tillman. Uh, he is a fifth year, had a thousand yard receiving season last year. I liked him this year too. He showed out against Georgia. Again, he only played like half the season, but he showed out against tough matchups. Uh, he's commonly comp to Michael Thomas. I think that's fair. I comp him to Michael Pittman. Uh, so I, I think Tillman here is actually for me where the cliff is, not Josh Down. He's he, Tillman's my last like real cliff here. Okay, Matthew. All right, up. so this is my second to last pick. I'm just gonna do it. Will Levis is going in the first round. You've got to take him. If <laughs> even if it's just based solely on his value, again, I I, I do agree with Mike. I'm not a fan of his. I had he's not going a lot in the first. Live. I'm just he saying he's not going in the first. He'll go in the first round. Whether we like it or not, he's going in the first round. And chances are you won't get him here once he does that because people will value that he's a first-round quarterback, and that value still it retains. Again, we mentioned Zach Wilson earlier. That's all I'll just say. I, I agree with Mike. I do not think he's a very good quarterback. And at this point, if you're taking him here, it's solely based on the fact that he'll retain value. You can trade him for more later. You had to do it. You had. I mean, I was thinking about it. Like, am I just going to do it? Like, you got to do it. And it's the first no round chance. quarterback. It's there's first no round chance he lasts in the second round. We're being a little contrarian here, and I think we took the bit. Yeah, all the way down the line here. It, we did the same thing uh, last year. Somebody ended up taking Kenny Pickett two hundred six because none of us were Kenny Pickett fans. But like, it's probably by the end prob- of the day, Pickett yeah. was like one hundred seven, one hundred eight. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's you know, we're yeah. we're committing to the bit here. In reality, he's going to be a first round real life. I think, and he's going to be. For, I know Mike disagrees, but. First but round, C2C and, and is taking a stand and saying he's going to be hashtag bad. He's bad. He's hashtag yeah. bad. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, so am I up finally? God, you are. So back to back. Last two picks, Alfred. Oh, okay, so the last guy who I think could be a first-round wide receiver here is Jalen Hyatt. I can't believe his fifth-year teammate goes drafted over him. That's silly. That's too much tape. You need, a, you need to le- work a little metrics into your system. Fifth-year senior, get out of here. Um, you know, I, I agree that Hyatt might be limited, but NFL is going to love his speed. And, you know, you, you, there are comps that you could say, uh, Will Fuller, there's a path for him to be a productive player here. Ted Ginn, 10 Ginn. Yeah, it could be 10, Ted, Ted Ginn had some decent seasons, didn't he? I think later in his career, but, um, even Tory Tory Smith had, you know, these deep fast guys, I'm not going to ever say like, Hey, he's lock and load wide receiver one. But at this point, late second round, I'm potentially getting a first round wide receiver, like who's really who's at least got one elite quality. I'll take it. Um, and then I I promised running backs, running backs, running backs. Although so did everyone else, so uh, I didn't expect them all to be off the board here. I think, yeah, screw it. I'm just gonna take a guy who I think is going to be a a flex. He's going to be a flex play for a pretty long time. He's never going to be a running back one. I'm not dreaming on a ceiling here. I'm just taking a very fun player who I think is just really freaking good at this game that we we, we love. And that's Deuce Vaughn. Kansas State, I do not know his draft capital. He's five foot six. He's 185 pounds, but he is awesome. He's awesome. He's He's an awesome are, runner. Are we ready He's for awesome. the Darren Sproles comps to just be flying off the board here? Oh, yeah. Same same college, same game uniform. You don't even need to do a uni swap. Like, absolutely, you're going to hear Darren Sproles out the wazoo. Um, and, frankly, it fits. I mean, you know, he's a great pass catcher, and he's a good running back. He's not, like, just a satellite guy. Like, he's good. The NFL, he's not going to get 20 touches. He may not even get – I mean, maybe if there's a bunch of injuries, he'll get like 18 touches in a game, like maybe one time. I think he's going to catch a lot of passes. He's going to be fantasy flex in in the PPR, half PPR. I think he's just a guy you're going to want on your team. Um, And there's other guys here on this board, names like Tavian Thomas, uh, Evan Hull, Hull, who is bigger, but I don't think he's as good. Rakeem Jarrett. I mean, these are guys who may never actually do anything for your fantasy team. Deuce Vaughn, I think, is going to be a flexy guy, a sexy flexy for a few years. And he's just fun. And I wanted to talk about him 
and we're in the second round. I don't have another pick. I mean, he's realistically more like a third round fantasy pick, I think, or fourth round, maybe. But I wanted to bring him up, and I don't hate it taking him here either. All right, Matthew, final pick. Yeah, torn between two players here. Um, Alfred mentioned the guy that I'm going to take. I just want to shout out Chase Brown, who I think is going to be an underrated player. I like Chase Brown. I'm not taking him here. I'm taking Rakeem Jarrett, though. Uh, Rakeem Jarrett, I think, is going to get better draft capital than we think. Maryland, I don't think, did him any favors. Tua's brother, Talia, is not a good quarterback. Again, Mike has mentioned, we've brought it up on this show multiple times, these teams draft these guys knowing what their their skill sets are and, and, and try and build their offenses around them. Like, Jared is a much better player than I think we give him credit for. He's really good after the catch. If you watch his his All-22 film, he's also, in my opinion, very smart. He always seems to find holes in coverages, and I think that is something underrated about him. I also think he is a fairly good route runner. He just was not... You know, for whatever reason, it just didn't work out in Maryland. Doesn't mean he can't be a good player in the NFL. I think he likely is going to get day two draft capital. And at that point, you're getting a guy who likely is going to retain value because the team drafted him high. So give me Rakeem Jarrett. Mike, send us home. I do have some comment on these prior picks. I do. Have to, I have to say it. I can't not. Will Lev is fine. Jalen Hyatt, he's going to get the draft capital. I can't lie. Two years ago, I drafted Kadarius Tony at the 2-5 of my home league. Not because I liked him, but because I thought he'd have the value that I can trade later on, which I did. So, and the dude's fine. Yeah, fine. All right, next. But 2 Rakeem Jarrett, I don't know, man. I mean, I just watched him not play well for three years straight. And I understand Maryland didn't do him any favors, but um, he's just he's just hurt me too bad, Matt. I can't do it, but... And I, I am cut between two guys, and I was really hoping Matt would have shaved it down for me. Uh, so I'm going to go a little spicy here. I'm, I'm going to say I'm between Rasheed Rice, who I think is an early day three guy, and the other guy who I think might be able to creep into second round draft capital, and that's going to be Andre Yoshivas from P- Princeton. Senior Bowl <laughs> invite, which I'm going to oh, see him it. in person. Yep. He is on paper athletically comped to players like Quentin Johnson. Now, when you watch his tape, you don't quite see that athleticism. You don't. But you do see him win games the way where we're watching high school tape and we just watch a player just get out-athleted. Like, there wasn't really any technical ability. They were just like, well, that guy's just bigger, better, stronger. That's what Andre Yoshivash is doing at the FCS level. And now he's going to get it, the chance to showcase his ability at the Senior Bowl in front of everybody. And so I'm kind of betting on the big man that's six foot three, 200 pounds, who's physical, has solid hands, maybe not a technician, but at the senior bowl, I think he's going to be a big riser. So I'm going to put him out here, make it a little hot at the end. But once again, I was between him and Rashid Rice. And Rashid Rice, I think, is a zone eater. I think he's a zone eater. I don't think he's a second rounder, but I, I do like Rashid Rice as well. 